Hello everyone, it's time for us to do our very first 2024 garden tour. Hello everyone and welcome back to Kim's Cozy Corner. I'm Kim and it is time for us to start planning for our outdoor garden for the 2024 season. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I wanted to do this January garden tour a lot earlier, but for the last two weeks, in addition to me being sick, it has been horrible it's been raining for two weeks the sun hasn't shined for two weeks and it's not shining today either and when i say it's been raining it's been raining cats and dogs and hogs and frogs i mean it's been coming down like crazy my garden's been underwater we have had record amounts of rains fall for the month of january and so it dried up just a little bit so i thought i'll get out here so i could still call this a january garden tour considering it's the last day of january but in order to get out here and to do a garden tour in january with the amount of rain and mud and everything else that i have in the garden y'all i had to put my high c boots on let me show you my boots high c offers a ton of different things in addition to all weather boots and um, High C sent me these boots back a few months ago and I wore them at the end of the season. And in the spring and winter in Southwest Ohio, it can get very muddy. So I am so glad that I have these High C boots so I can walk around the garden and show you around without getting my feet wet. So let's talk about how we're going to set this year's garden up. There's going to be a lot of changes, y'all. A lot of changes coming to Kim's Cozy Corner. And so we will talk through some of those changes just a little bit today. Now, for those who don't know, I have a main garden area here. And way, way, way over there. That's my neighbor's garden. Those are my primary two gardening areas. And so I want to talk a little bit about some changes that are coming. And now there's nothing growing in Southwest Ohio in January, <laughs> not outside anyway. So I'm going to talk about some of the cleanup, some of the new designs that are coming, um, as well as let's look at how these fruit trees and things are looking and what we think is going to happen with those this year, right? So it's time for us to start dreaming about the 2024 season. So let's go. So this is my main garden area. I have raised beds in this space, as well as green stalks or green stalk vertical planters. And there will be many, many more green stalk vertical planters in this space, but I'm changing it up. I am changing it up this year. Typically in this space right here, and here's a picture of this space from last year, I have about 30 containers of potatoes right here. Now we're going to do something different here this year. Beagle Gardens reached out to me and they are providing me a couple of their metal raised beds. And I went ahead and bought a couple more. So we're going to put in four metal raised beds this year. And so in this space right here where I normally have containers of potatoes, we are going to install two metal raised beds in this space. And so I am going to have potatoes growing in pots as well as 17 inch metal raised beds. So we can do some comparison and see, do they do better in pots or do they do better in raised beds? So this space is going to look very differently and no worries because I will bring you along as I'm installing these metal raised beds to this space. Now, since I'm adding those metal raised beds right here, y'all, I need to move my green stalk. I need to move my green stalk to have room for those metal raised beds. Y'all, I'm wading in the water over here. Boy, 
So we're going to take that green stalk and we are going to move it to right here. So I have a strawberry vertical planter here. There are strawberries in the front right here. And then we will add another strawberry vertical planter here. So we have a green stalk there and a green stalk here. Now behind these fire rings is a cattle panel trellis with grapes on it. So this will be another fruit area. I think it's gonna be very beautiful over here. Now that's some of the biggest changes in my garden here, in the main garden area. Um, we will plan it out. We will talk about what's going on the trellises. We will talk about, you know, how many tomato plants I have room for, which, you know, I like to plant a lot of tomatoes. I'm usually in the range of over a hundred tomato plants, but we will get that all set up. We'll get our list together. We'll make sure we got room for everything. We do have some garden cleanup. So this was some of the things I put in the garden for fall harvesting, which I didn't do. And so it's still out here. So I do have a little more cleanup I need to do. This was um, cabbage and broccoli and kohlrabi. And what else was over here? This was uh, leeks. I did harvest some of the leeks, but I didn't get them all. There's a few more cabbages over here that I didn't get cleaned up. Now in this bed right here, I had rhubarb and I'm hoping rhubarb comes back in this bed this year. Um, I was not planning on starting any this year. So hopefully that rhubarb survives. And um, this would be year two of the rhubarb and we would be able to harvest it, hopefully. So you've seen pretty much every angle of my main garden area. So right here on the edge of my driveway, we're right next to my little mini orchard. We will be adding four green stalks. Two of them will have dwarf tomatoes in them. So that's gonna be 48 dwarf tomato plants. And two of them will have peppers in it. One of them will be a, um, a green stalk that I overwintered the peppers. So if you've been following me, you've seen the peppers being overwintered in my indoor growth space. That would be one of the planters. And the other planter, we will have to put it out and start it from scratch. So we will have fresh, sweet peppers growing in the other one. Now I'm gonna have all of those green stalks on spinners. So the ultimate spinner will be a part of those as well as wheels because you know, we got some work to do in my driveway. So I need to be able to roll them out the way before we do that work in the driveway and put them back in place once that driveway construction work has been completed. Now, while I'm standing in front of my little mini orchard here, uh, I did not get any apples last year. No, no apples, but last year was the first full year that these trees had been in place and they have bulked up nicely. They have these little nodes on them and I've been told that's where an apple would grow. So I believe we're gonna get apples this year. I still need to do some pruning, not much, but just a little pruning on, on that tree. Over here I have, I have blackberry bushes that need to be managed as well. So two blackberry bushes over here. These two containers had Napa cabbage in it that I didn't do anything with, I just let die. <laughs> so I, got, I got some containers to clean up over here as well. This is a peach tree and I believe I see blooms coming in this year. Now this peach tree as well, this will be the second full year that it's been set up ready to go and I don't, I don't think this thing really needs much pruning either. So we got peach trees, we have apple trees, we have blackberries over there. And I put in this galvanized tub last year and filled it full of strawberries. And there's one blueberry plant in the back, right back there, that's a blueberry plant. And I have one blueberry plant back there. So this is the mini orchard, and I believe it's gonna be very productive this year. 
There are strawberries also around the peach tree right here. There's only one other area in the main, as I'm stepping through mud here, garden area that we haven't talked about. This is the back corner of my main garden area and I have an arch trellis, a cattle panel arch trellis here. And I did a video on how to set those up. And so you can check that out if you're interested in using cattle panel um, for trellising in any way, shape or form. I got a couple of videos out there to show you how to do that. But back here, we are going to put our pole beans and that's going to fill that trellis in nicely. And just inside of that trellis, so just inside where those beans are going to be growing, you see right here in the front, y'all, this is celery. I was trying for five plants and I ended up with about 50. Now I had this whole area of celery and I had celery over at the neighbors. Y'all, we're not doing that this year. We're not, we are not growing that much celery this year. So I'm thinking about onion here because there's going to be a little bit of shade here when we get into those really hot months or um, some cauliflower, maybe cabbage, something in here that can handle a little bit of partial sun. Um, it will not be celery though. We are not growing 50 heads of celery this year. Look at all this water. But my feet are dry. Now over here, there's the side of the house and just to the side of the house, there are two more peach trees over here. And y'all, this is the one I think I'm gonna have to thin out the peaches on. This thing is covered in little bloom or nodes or whatever you call that, where they're gonna bloom and could possibly put peaches on. We're gonna have to thin peaches on this one. Now this one, um, it looks good, honestly. It looks very good. This is another one that I don't believe that I need to do much pruning on for this upcoming season. Wouldn't it be completely amazing if I can grow enough peaches in my three little trees that I have here and preserve them so that I don't have to buy them? Last year, I bought a bushel, or was it a half bushel, of peaches that I preserved for the family. But wouldn't it be nice if I didn't have to do that, that I grew my own? I'm excited, y'all, I can't wait. I can't wait, I'm so excited. This little space here is where I grew my sweet potatoes last year. And y'all, my sweet potato harvest was awesome. It was so good. If you haven't checked out that sweet potato video, y'all, you need to check out the sweet potato video. I was so excited and everybody keeps saying they could see that it was real and it was truly real. My sweet potatoes were beautiful. They weren't lunkers. They were um, perfectly shaped, perfectly sized and delicious by the way. These were the sweetest sweet potatoes my mom said she's ever tasted. So this is where we grew sweet potatoes and we are going to do something different now. We're gonna add one of those metal raised beds here, one of the, the Vigo garden metal raised beds. And we're gonna pull out this 100 gallon grow bag and add in the raised bed instead. So I'm really, really excited about this space and how it's gonna look very differently for this upcoming season. And this is the last space, at least on my property, um, where I try to grow a few things. Behind me, I had containers over here last year and I grew um, winter squash over here. I tried to grow watermelon, I tried to grow cantaloupe and I think a tomato plant volunteered over here last year. But we are not doing containers over here of pots. When I say containers, I meant pots. We're not doing pots over here this year. This year, we're adding another metal raised bed. So we will put a metal raised bed through here and we're gonna put herbs in that metal raised bed here. And that's all that's going in the bed. All the herbs that I'm gonna start this year, we're pulling them out of our green stalk planters and we're gonna put them in a raised bed here, which frees up even more space in my planters for more vegetables. Now, I already have a year supply or more of most of my herbs, but 
I want to grow more vegetables. I've decided since my family size has gotten so small that in addition to my neighbors on one side, I am going to provide all the vegetables for two more of my neighbors. Um, one lives in the neighborhood and one doesn't, but we are going to try to grow enough food for my family and three neighbors and families and friends, if that makes sense, what I'm saying. So I am trying to grow enough food for a total of 11 people. Our goal is to grow fresh, vegetables enough to feed 11 people now they don't all live in my house but we're going to feed 11 people in 2024 that's the goal four families my family and three other families we are going to feed 11 people in my growth space that's what we're doing this year y'all and hopefully you're going to come with me so let's go over and look at the neighbor's garden and talk about what we're going to do over there Okay, I forgot to talk about the patio. So on the patio, I have two green stalk vertical planters that I just kind of left in place. We will continue to have green stalks on the patio, but we may move them over on this side instead. But we will have green stalks full of leafy greens and vegetables and all kinds of goodness in this space here. Now, I keep talking about green stalks, but did y'all know I have 11 green stalks that I grow vegetables in? 11. And I don't believe we're going to add any greens. I might change my mind, though. But I don't believe we're adding any more green stalks for vegetables. But we will be adding a few green stalks for flowers in the coming months. So 11 green stalks full of fruits and vegetables and two green stalks with flowers. I'm wading in water, y'all. Look at this. Look at all of this water. Man, it's really got to dry out before we can do any planting outside. Now, we are over at my neighbor's garden, and my neighbor has one green stalk here, and everything else is a raised bed. And his raised beds have been in place for many years. Uh, some of them have kind of fallen apart, and there's just remnants of where a raised bed used to be and there's obviously remnants of where all of that celery <laughs> used to be last year. Now we will add celery back to this space. My neighbors do eat fresh celery. I don't but my neighbors do so we will make sure there's just enough celery over here for them. I don't need to freeze any. I don't need to preserve any. I got a five-year supply probably if not more. <laughs> Um, we will also, in addition to this green stalk, we're going to add one more green stalk into this space here. That's going to be full of a variety of things, y'all, a variety of things. Um, if I tell you what I'm going to put in it now, by the time I get ready to plant it, it'll be something different. So, but a variety of a variety of things from leafy greens to broccoli to cabbage to herbs, tomatoes, just tons of stuff will be over here. Now last year we had to really work on the soil in all of these beds. Uh, we had to add tons and tons of potting soil to these beds because they were full of clay, hard dense clay. And we finally got these beds, I believe, into a good condition and they should pump out tons and tons of vegetables for us this year. Can you tell? I'm excited y'all. I am so excited about getting this 2024 season kicked off. I'm looking at the garden. I'm designing the garden. I'm getting my plans together. We've already started seeds. We've already started some of the cool season seeds. We need to start tons and tons more, but y'all I'm excited for 2024. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed this and I'm hoping you'll come along with me for the 2024 season. Until next time, and as I always say, I hope there will be a next time where you join me at Kim's Cozy Corner. Bye.